Right, we're going to do some small mammal trapping in Longworth traps. This is a Longworth trap, uh, it's got two parts. A uh, bedding chamber, which we stuff it with some hay or some straw. And then this is the part we call the tunnel, and this is the bit that actually traps the small mammal. There's a bar inside, you can see it at the back there, and when that's tripped by the small mammal, the door shuts and locks, and this little locking bar there stops it being pushed on the outside, uh, from the inside, and they can't get back out. We have to, of course, feed the small mammals, uh, otherwise they will uh, they will die. <clears throat> this is just a seed mix for things like uh, voles and mice. And if we're trapping for shrews, by law we must put in food for shrews. These are casters. So they're blowfly pupae, and we put in a generous amount of these so that any shrews we catch, which are mainly insectivores, will uh, we'll have, we'll have something to eat. For trapping shrews, you do need a license <coughs> um, to ensure the welfare of the animals. And I think the main stipulation is that you're appropriately trained on how to uh, use uh, mammal traps and trap for shrews. So I've assembled the, uh, the Longworth trap there and we can then set it ready to catch a small mammal. Okay, we're going to set a small mammal trap now. Find somewhere suitable. We're going to set it <coughs> right underneath this grass tussock where small mammals will be hiding. Just check the, the trap set. Cover it up to protect it from the extremes of uh, temperature. You've got to remember where we set it, so lots of different methods of doing it. Um, here we're going to use just a, a couple of cocktail sticks stuck in the grass there. So when we come back later on we can, uh, we can find it easily. So here's the markers for our first trap. We've got a cocktail stick in here and uh, a bit of tape on some grass for that obviously got a bit damp and has fallen apart. So our trap's buried here in the grass. And we'll see, have we got anything there? No, nope, nothing in that one. Okay, so our next trap, again, marked with a bit of tape and some uh, cocktail sticks. So buried in the grass a bit. And the door's shut on this one, so hopefully we've got something inside. Okay, so it looks like we've got a, a, uh, a tripped Longworth trap. So we'll try and see what's inside. So the easiest way is to stick them in a, a plastic bag. We can then take the tunnel part out probably have a quick look in the tunnel to make sure this is not hiding in there doesn't appear to be and then try and tip out what we've got <clears throat> and we have got something I'm just try and move into one end of the bag <coughs> Tip away all the bedding and food. And we can see what we've got. Here we've got a field roll, uh, much larger than the bank roll, and uh, the fur is a little bit um, more brown rather than red. But the major feature is the length of the tail, really short tail there perhaps about 15 to 25 percent of the body length it's quite active and we'll get him out and we can show you the ID features so here's the field bowl uh, he's, he's quite settled there you can see how short his tail is in comparison to, uh, to the length of his body uh, and uh, you can see that the fur is you know it's a nice sort of uh, brown color rather than the reddish of a bank bowl um, and actually he's quite big he's uh, quite calm this one So, oh, it was in the tunnel, so it's always a good idea to check the tunnel. So this is a water shrew, this is the largest shrew we've got, out of the three uh, mainland uh, shrews. Mainly aquatic, but as you can see we've caught it in some long grassland, although there is a, a river about uh, 40 metres over there. Um, they're not entirely aquatic, they do forage uh, away from the river. I'll try and get him out, and here he is. You can see they're a very dark um, sort of coloured back uh, with a pale um, uh, belly and underneath large uh, uh, nose, very tiny eyes and tiny ears which make it a, a shrew and uh, 
I say he's quite active and he hasn't started biting me yet but they they do like to, to try and escape from your uh, from your hold so I'm holding this with a uh, uh, holding the back leg and, and the tail um, as you can see he can move around a bit but he's um, uh, he, he can't escape from my grasp yeah so this is a pygmy shrew it's got uh, very very pink feet and pink nose which is quite um, quite distinctive um, but the length of the tail is larger than 50% of the body so um, that's the nice as a pygmy shrew this is a fairly large pygmy shrew and um, separating those from common shrew can be a bit tricky um, but yeah we've got a nice uh, large adult pygmy shrew and I think it's quite an old one the, the, the fur is just starting to grey on the top of the head so this is probably quite an aged shrew and I'm guessing he probably won't make the winter This one's been tripped, so let's uh, go out and have a look and see what we've got. So we'll look at the top of the trap first. You can actually see some droppings and some urine on the top of there. So we've had a small creature been on top. I'm going to uh, shut the bag a lot, uh, lot tighter here because uh, if it is a mouse, which uh, they're highly likely in this woodland, they're a lot more livelier than the uh, the shrews and the voles we've we've seen so far and it is indeed a little mouse <clears throat> we'll just try and separate him from his bedding so we've got a mouse two species are possible here the wood mouse and the yellow net mouse this is just a wood mouse you can see massive eyes and massive ears compared to the voles and the, and the shrew we've seen um, before so you can see a uh, wood mice, some do have the uh, yellow stripe down the middle. On a yellow neck mouse that would be a broad collar joining that from the shoulders. As you can see they're not joined up here so this is just a, just a wood mouse. 